there needs to be a sense that these architectural structures are implying a story. And it might be an, an unresolved story, a story that you know, we don't know where the structures came from, why they're there, what's happening to them, what will happen to them. But there needs to be some kind of reference to the, the what if. What would happen if I quit my job and become an artist? <laughs> what would happen if I put this shape next to that shape? What would happen if I put that color next to that color? I just love getting people to ask questions about the art. I am often thinking about how the viewer is going to interact with the shapes, with the colors. I want people to feel a connection, like I recognize something and I feel touched by it in a way, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do. My name is Kelston Reynolds. I am a large-scale installation artist, and I've been doing these sorts of architectural installations for about 17 years now. We've lived in New England since about 1994, and um, it's a place I call home at this point. In grad school, I was um, a painter and transformed out of the out of painting into doing um, these large-scale installations because I was feeling like I needed to create an experience that was really immersive for the viewer. And, you know, as my paintings were getting larger and larger, I was trying to immerse the viewer in that experience of looking, um, but just found that jumping into something that was three-dimensional was where I needed to go next. A lot of architecture has a history, a deep, deep history, and a deep philosophical history in rational thought. It almost gets under our skin without realizing it, that we expect architecture to create this cohesive, unified experience for us. I became more interested and have continued to be interested in architecture as an unfolding process, as something that appears as if it's kind of out of this imaginary world. And then out of that imaginary world, it looks like it is either falling apart or in the process of being constructed. And it's undetermined at what point does that lie. The model making is really the way that I can have an intuitive process for building a complex architectural structure. I really like getting my hands on the materials and starting to immediately see the relationships between things and the sizes that they might look like in real life. I have a scale figure that represents a six foot tall person and I can really quickly get an intuitive sense for how tall the structure is and the fact that this would hit about the shoulders of an average size adult. The really important thing in all this work, just like traditional architecture, is how does this change the spatial experience for a person as they move around it or through it? Um, how does that change their spatial experience of the gallery space? And I think most importantly, how is the experience an unfolding experience? It's not something that one absorbs right away. It's something that is constantly changing and it's changing in relationship to your movement through that space. And so it's your choice or your actions that are determining the type of experience you have with the work. My name is Rob Hitzig. I'm an abstract artist living in Montpelier, Vermont. You know, living in Vermont is ideal for me. I need the peace and quiet. I need the space. I just, I just love being here. I'm not a trained artist. I didn't go to art school. My work evolved out of a furniture making hobby. So I learned the techniques of working with shellac while working with wood. And I'm applying it to painting. So what I do is I, I create a base layer with the, the brushing it on, but I'll polish it with the cloth and a much lighter grade, a much more dilute solution of shellac. And by doing that, you could get this really fine finish, this really high gloss finish. But what's great about it beyond it being high gloss is that it literally magnifies the surface. You can see multiple layers and it just all pops. I like the messiness of it underneath. I like the, just the randomness. I use spray paint on this and it can get some really interesting effects with little dots some places. 
The idea is to, to get your mind working, to get people thinking, to get people questioning what is it. That generation of questions in there, it will just work in other places too. It's like a, a inertia, it's an effect of inertia, questioning. And um, so what I'm, what I'm really trying to do with all this is create an, a mind-opening experience. That's really the goal. My name is Rachel Gross. I am a printmaker, an artist, and I live in Heartland, Vermont. I think living in Vermont has been really great for me, partially because of the community. When I was in graduate school, I was doing a lot of more representational work and drawings of furniture, but still kind of interested in architectural spaces. And then I started sort of moving more towards abstraction. When I started doing more relief printmaking, I would cut out shapes out of uh, thin plywood and print them on paper. And I became very attached to the shapes themselves and the plywood and that kind of um, led me to make shaped panels and then sometimes even um, collaging parts of the prints onto the panels. This is actually sort of like a silk screen monotype and and I cut it into pieces and I'm going to print on top of it so it's sort of like um, you know using some old ephemera and then using it as background texture. So um, yeah I'll just sort of figure out what shapes work together and then what you know see how it kind of combines to form something new and how it how the different layers create new spaces i try not to think too much like okay this is going to be about this i i i feel i have trust in in sort of the process that that these meanings these connections will emerge through the process um, if i can kind of engage people in, in the work, in the way that, you know, that I'm feeling engaged in it myself. The three artists, myself included, we're all dealing with a type of abstract quality in our work that um, on the one hand references a geometric organization, but at the same time kind of repels or resists it, you know, escapes it. It's like that idea of like that you can kind of create this like little space to enter and you know it's like wavered back and forth from like making that more explicit in terms of the representational or you know whether it's just a sense of like you know through the geometry or color of a more abstract piece. There's no limits. There's no limit in art and I think that by showing that in art you create a feeling for the viewer that there's no bounds. That there is a, a freedom beyond what people typically conceive of as freedom.